next day, uh, we were very kindly driven by the Dean of the Language Department in the local university and Rasima, who teaches English. And they took us uh, quite a long way uh, towards the west over the Vyatka River. And then we made our way to the village of Salkolka because that village was described as the place where the artillery were firing on the White Pleat and where the grandfather, when he called in the six-inch gun, uh, was able to silence that battery. And the point here is that gun was the only one that had the range to get to the target. And once we were up on the high ground, we had the most amazing vista. And we could see up the Viatica in one direction, we could see where the Kama joined the Viatica, and then we could see the two combined mighty rivers, sounds like the Mississippi or something, um, flowing downwards. Of course, what we couldn't see is that later on they uh, joined the Volga uh, and so on. But what we could also see was the huge ranges that some of the guns were able to fire over. Uh, and in his description, he described how the red artillery up on the high ground could reach the village of Kotlovka. Uh, and I worked out, if I got it right, it's about 16 kilometers from where I was standing. And indeed, we could see that uh, and we could pan the camera in. What it does mean is they must have had, one hopes, good pairs of um, binoculars because without binoculars really it was very hard to see uh, what um, must have been going on in those days. The first battle took place when the Red Flotilla came down the Viatica into the T-junction here and immediately there was an engagement between them and the guardship of the right flotilla, the Grashiashi, which was somewhere around here. She came off worse, she didn't have enough range to reach them. We're talking about um, maybe eight kilometers. Uh, she got hit in the boiler room and became disabled. The rest of the white flotilla came steaming down here, including Kent, uh, and they too had problems getting the range. Uh, and indeed, they had to retire back and await for Suffolk, this is with the six inch gun in a tug, to come somewhere down here, uh, and she certainly did have the range, a range of probably 20 kilometres or more, um, and was able to knock out artillery up on the high ground here. Now, we were at the village of Salkolka two days ago, and we could see why it was such a commanding position, because this high ground here could see straight across the marsh, straight up here, and indeed we... We're now crossing the Vyatka, a tributary of the Kama, internal tributary of the Volga, uh, and in a minute we'll be turning left so to go down in the direction that the camera is uh, pointing to the village of Salkolka uh, to see what the red ships were up to. On the 14th of May 1919, reports came that the red flotilla had arrived at the entrance to the Kama River where it meets the Viatica. This is precisely down here where we can see what looks like a T-junction. The Viatka River off to the left meets the Kama River and they don't both then become the Kama River because the Viatka is in fact a tributary uh, and flows down to our right over here. Cut. From far on the white guard ship called the Gregiashi. Now we know where she was. She was approximately where rather conveniently there is a ship here today. Uh, and about eight kilometers away in the distance, on the bend in the river, was the White Gotch. Now her guns, she had three inch guns, did not have sufficient range to get right up here. She was straddled by the Red Fleet. She was hit in the engine room and was put out of action. The Red Artillery was also up here on the high ground where we're standing now and they really did have some range. We know from the reports by Captain Jemison that their rounds were seen falling around Kotlovka, 16 kilometers over there. A lovely sunny day, we could just about see Kotlovka in the distance. The next thing that happened in the story was that the rest of the White Flotilla, some six ships including the Kent, came steaming down the river at high speed uh, from uh, Kotlovka uh, towards, again, where we can see this uh, boat here in the middle. But they also had a difficulty because simply they could not outrange the red artillery up here on the high ground. So, not being able to
to do very much. They had started to beat something of a retreat, and no point standing around getting damaged. But at this stage, Suffolk, this is the barge carrying the six inch gun, being dragged by a tug, appeared somewhere uh, this side of Kotlovka, and with the mighty six inch gun, uh, was able to start landing rounds here where I am standing now, to also uh, land rounds at the Red Fleet, which is down below us where I'm standing, and at that stage the Red Fleet had to retire. The White Army on the south bank were somewhere over here, this is just the other side of the Kama Vyatka River, uh, they were retreating. Uh, the story doesn't say whether the Reds had already got across the river, but if they hadn't, they were certainly bringing fire down on the Whites over here, the White Army. Tom Jamison reports that it was very difficult to communicate with them, because the ground between them and the White land forces was covered in water and bog and marsh. And indeed, if we look down here, we can see how very, very difficult it must have been uh, to communicate with them in any way whatsoever. The final part of the story of the first action between the Red and White flotillas uh, ends here in the village of Salkoka, just down here. Salkoka looking, overlooking the junction of the Vyatka and the Kama rivers. There was artillery up here, firing into the river below, reaching all the way up to Kotlovka. Kent and Suffolk could see the firing, and Suffolk, with a six-inch gun, was able to knock out a battery just behind the church down here. Now, of course, we can't see the church. It is almost certain that the church was destroyed subsequently, but it would be logical to assume that the Red Artillery was somewhere on the ground where we're standing now because of the incredible view right over here. The camera is panning round to look at the view up the Kama River, all the way to Kotlovka. I need to introduce two tremendous Russian friends who we only met today and yesterday who have been so helpful to us. Vasima and Anatoly. Uh, Anatoly is the Dean of the Language Department at the University in uh, Yalabaga and Rosina is the person responsible for teaching English. Uh, and without them, and without your superb driving, uh, we would never got here to Sarkoka uh, to be able to see the scene um, behind us. So, tell me, how, how do you feel about this? Uh, nearly a hundred years after the event, this uh, battle down here on the Kama River. It's clearly unbelievable that uh, it was new to me that the English participated in this battle, and the scene is fantastic. Oh, I think you're probably yeah, right, you, <laughs> yes. yes. Of course, the reason why we were here was not uh, only about 35 British people, but it was that, that uh, Admiral Kolchak needed artillery, cannons, uh, and guns, and we were able to provide them from a, a British warship uh, based down in, in Vladivostok. Okay. And how do you feel, Anatoly? Is this an interesting piece of history for you? Yes, it's amazing that uh, we learn it from you. <laughs> So, uh, I know that Russia is a country with an unpredictable past, not the future, but the past. Let us hope the future is more predictable. <laughs> <laughs> so many Always. facts for you. Uh, yes, yes. So the, the, the more we live, the more we learn about our past. Yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed. Okay. And yesterday, being on the high ground, being able to look down on the Vyatka and the uh, Kama rivers did give me a very clear sense of what the two fleets were having to face and how difficult it must have been for the white flotilla exposed there on the open river when they were outranged uh, by the Russians, uh, the Red Russians. Uh, and certainly, you know, a nice warm sunny day, but in those days it must have been pretty difficult for them. They had poor food, uh, poor communications, uh, it looked like the Reds were advancing in a victorious way.